All right, so this is my real <laughs> gas demo here. Got my absolute zero demonstrator. Give me a pressure reading. And if I look carefully, it looks like I've got almost 15 pounds per square inch. Um, remember, I have a solid sphere here. Okay. And in this sphere, I have regular air and oxygen. What I really should do is I should equilibrate the air pressure inside. It's a little um, tire valve here. So I'm going to press that, press that in to make sure the pressure inside is the same as the atmospheric pressure. I don't know if that changed anything. Okay. But if we get up close and personal, we can see that this, I know it's hard to see, but it's almost 15. So I'm thinking it's about, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 14, let's not make it um, 14, mm, well, Christmas, unless I move the electricity, 14.9. That's the pressure inside, which by the way is the pressure outside because we opened up the valve. Okay. All right. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that the ideal gas law formula, PV equals NRT, it's called the ideal gas law formula because it's based upon gases, what? Not attracting each other. So this would give me the perfect results if the gases are acting ideally. Now I could solve for the what? New pressure when I lower the temperature to a negative 196 degrees Celsius, which I will do in a second with liquid nitrogen. Okay, and I can use my R. But I know that I can use something uh, also, it's a little easier to use is that I know from my derivations that PV equals NRT, PV over T equals NR, NR equals PV over T. So I can use my ideal gas law formula, and I'm going to do so for simplicity's sake. So what do I know? I know that I have a pressure times volume over temperature, pressure volume over temperature. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you right now, we've got the solid sphere, it's what? It's immovable, okay? It's not compressible. So we're going to say that the volume is constant. Okay, we know that the current temperature is approximately 22 degrees Celsius. Now, 22 degrees Celsius, I'm going to add 273. What's that going to give me? A Kelvin temperature, right? So 273 is what? 295. So I've got 295 Kelvin here. Got to be in Kelvin, got to be in absolute state. The pressure, we're going to keep in PSI because it's reading PSI, and that's 14.9. And we're going to write PSI for pounds per square inch, and we're going to get rid of the volume. So what we're going to solve for is a new pressure at a new temperature. The new temperature is going to be at negative 196 degrees Celsius. That's approximately the boiling or condensation point of the nitrogen. Why does it condense? Because it's a real gas. So we add that to 273, what do we get? What's that? 273 minus 196, what is that? I'm asking some people to go with me as opposed to just watch. 77. 77 Kelvin. That's fine. So we're going to lower this to 77 Kelvin. So we can see as temperature drops, so should the pressure. This is going to be obviously a what? A proportionate okay type of scenario okay temperature pressure is a proportionate if our temperature is in Kelvin so let's go solve for that all right so if I solve for that okay and I use my linear algebra or just use my algebra P is going to equal 77 Kelvin over 295 Kelvin times 14 0.9 PSI. Kelvin's cancel. I'm left with PS, PSI. Now let's go find that value. Or I'll find that value. 77 divided by 295 times 14.9er. And I get approximately 13.88 PSI. Let's go with two significant figures, so 13.9, or 3.9 PSI. That's what I expect to happen, okay? 
Let's see what actually does happen. Okay? Remember, this is assuming gas molecules just get what? Slower and slower and slower and slower, but don't actually attract each other, will not actually condense. That's not going to be the case. We know that all gases act, okay, as real gases. All right, so I'm going to put a little fun little guy in here. We're going to submerge him. Why I made him a boy, I'm not sure. Okay, and again, I don't know if you can see that, uh, that was there. Okay, 13, 3.9. All right. And I guess we're going to make this a new, so we can see it better. Not going to care. Okay. So, a bigger flask for a bigger guy. Oh. Should go down to zero, right? Should go down to zero, right? Is that zero Kelvin? It's getting there, though. It's moving. Looks like I'm going to need more. That darn liquid likes to evaporate. I guess it's warmer than 196 degrees Celsius in here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's warmer than negative 196 in here. Okay. More juju juice. Okay. All right. So, just make sure the needle's not stuck. Remember, this is just a spring on a copper tube. Okay. So, let's see what she looks like. I'm just tapping it to make sure it's not stuck. All right, so let's get up close and personal. All right, and it's... Okay, so how would we read this? Oh, gosh, 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 right? So, yeah, I would look at here as one, two, three. It's hard to... We got three and a half, 3.5-ish. It's a little... It's a tad... It's a tad greater than that. It's 3.5-ish. And what did we expect? 3.9. So why? Let's think about this for a second, party people. We expected 3.9 PSI. What we got was what? 3.5. What we got was 3.5 PSI. So we calculated for, but actually got. Why was our pressure lowered? Why was our pressure lowered? Yes? Because the molecules were attracted to each other, they spent less time pushing out in the container. Couldn't say it better myself. Okay? Molecules attracted each other. Their mean free paths were what? The, the paths between collisions were actually longer because they were attracting. In fact, if we think about it carefully, what's the boiling point of oxygen? You should know that. You should have memorized that over the break. Oxygen's boiling point is negative 183. Ooh, my first party person. Love it. Whereas the boiling point of liquid, oxygen, liquid nitrogen is one nine, negative 196. Liquid nitrogen is colder in its condensational boiling point than oxygen. So guess what? In here, you probably have liquid oxygen. So it's the same idea. Nitrogen is moving slower and attracting each other more. And more importantly, okay, some of it became probably a liquid. Okay. Now this has nothing to do with the demo. But it's pretty cool to do. So I've got this sphere that's pretty cold. Okay. What you can do is throw some water on it. Ice? Yeah, it's pretty kind of cool. So I'll throw some, throw some water on it. Ooh, cold.
Yeah. Any case, moving forward.